Julie, what happened in Tana River was totally unacceptable because it went on for almost three months and the government seemed almost unable to contain it. If I was president today and there is any problem anywhere in Kenya, I will ask the cabinet secretary in charge or myself to report to that place and stay there until the problem is solved. Before, because beco before you address the long-term issues like unemployment, economic disparities, conflicts over resources, you've got to contain the problem immediately. You've got to save lives. We have got also to involve people. Look at uh, the case in Nairobi where you, there is a bomb blast. Everybody rushes there. Nobody tells Kenyans that that is already a, a, a cause of insecurity to them and their lives. We've got to involve people and create major awareness. So the ministry in charge of security must be much more active than it is now. We must overhaul immigration department because there's too much corruption there. And a lot of illegal people are getting into Kenya and getting out. They're even selling our passports. We've got to stop these things. And corruption is the single most important cause of insecurity in Kenya. If we stop it and become serious, we can stop it. How will you stop it? You, you know, these, a lot of these cartels are entrenched, and if what we've heard from... I think, number one, I will require all the security agencies to be clearly coordinated and a, a, a line of command established with one person who will be able to call the shots, because right now they're going in different directions. Two, we will make sure that we give them the tools and capacity. Three, the people themselves are the first line of defense. Let's engage the people in security matters. Okay, let me come now to Uhuru Kenyatta. And uh, the Jubilee Manifesto goes into quite a bit of detail. It talks about, for instance, 15,000 new recruits a year. Um, uh, tell us more about your plans, uh, and are they too ambitious, perhaps? I think first and foremost, let me address uh, Ismail himself and say that Indeed, the happenings in Tana River are most unfortunate. And let me say this. In, in my government, a crime will be a crime. No longer will one be able to hide behind their community. If it is murder, you're a murderer. It is not a community. If you are a cattle rustler, you're a cattle rustler. And you will be treated by the law in exactly that manner. As I say that, we need to also recognize that the problem in Tana River also goes a little bit deeper. There are also social aspects that are involved. It is a fight over boundaries. It is a fight over resources. In my government, we will ensure that the pastoral communities in those regions are given adequate access to water for their livestock and adequate also veterinary services for their livestock. We will ensure for our farming communities also in the region that we will expand the irrigation uh, um, programs that were initiated by this government while I was in the Ministry of Finance and my running mate, William Muto, was in the Ministry of Agriculture, we will seek to expand irrigation in those areas so as to reduce the potential areas of conflict. That said and done, insecurity is not just a problem of Tana River. It's a national problem. We need to be able to address it. I don't think we need to change our pastoral communities, per se. I think we can turn our livestock industry into a productive sector. We need to train, to re-educate our pastoral farmers. We need to be able to ensure that we um, give them improved range management, water supply, so that, in short, they don't have to travel all those great distances. We need to commercialize our livestock farming. That said and done, to also reduce incidences of cattle rustling. I think using modern technology for example, chipping or put, implanting chips uh, in our livestock would go a long way in helping track those animals and track culprits. Your, thank you. Your time is up. You've gone into detail on the pastoral I, I think uh, it's pastoralist yeah. issue, mm. but um, we will try and, and go into more on security in just a moment because mm. I'm going to put another question to each of you. Um, we're speaking of security as we head into an election, and we all know what happened in 2007, 2008. And many questions have come in, this same question actually, put in different ways, with Kenyans asking, what will each of you pledge to do to ensure that Kenya is peaceful during and after the election? 
Let me start on this end and go all the way down. Paul, let's start with you. I have already started. There's a party Safina has already started because we have steered clear of whipping up ethnic emotions. We have not mobilized along ethnic lines. And the way we will continue to be issue-based, we will continue to preach the economic policies we are going to implement in order to give everybody a chance. For example, in Taita Taveta, that I don't know which is being mined there, we'll make it a condition that a smelting plant be built there mm -hmm. instead of exporting it to Rome. So, and we will accept the results of free and fair elections. And if you are dissatisfied, now that the judiciary is working, you'll go to court. We will go to court. We will not ask young people to take up arms. Absolutely. Uh, let's go to Raila Odega. Well, Judy, uh, you know that uh, Kenyans have now had about four uh, multi party elections. And the, the past, the, 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 the violence was actually before the elections. It was only this last time round in 2007 when we had violence post-election. And we all know what actually happened. We are saying that we don't want a repeat of what happened in 2008 to be repeated again in this country. We have said as God, do we will accept the results of these the elections. If we are defeated, we will accept defeat. And uh, if there are any complaints, we will go to, uh, go to court. Thank but you. Ten seconds. What we're saying is that uh, we don't want to mobilize along ethnic lines. That's why we are campaigning on a national platform to unite the people. And we also said telling the media to help us do this so that the media also desist from uh, going along the ethnic lines which will actually polarize the country. Like what happened recently, and I mentioned it before, I don't uh, fear to mention it again here, this idea of bundling ethnic figures polarizes the country along ethnic lines. And it is not helpful for a national campaign. Um, um, you want to compete along ideological lines. You have a clear policy that you want to sell to the people of Kenya and to judge us on the basis of the, 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 the program that we're putting before the people. Thank you so much, Martha. You have one minute, 30 seconds. Now Kenya has been spearheading peace for the last five years since the election period. And what we are telling Kenyans is that at the end of the day, after politicians in sight, it is the poor who fight each other. We, the political class, never fight. They have seen us here laughing with each other, greeting each other. So they should not allow us to mislead them with talk of ethnicity. What but will we you must do? show yes. us leadership now. We must be able to abide by the law, accept the results of election, and if one is unhappy, you go to court. Even 207, I said anybody aggrieved go, should have gone to court. We've been using the same courts even before the reforms as politicians. So we should never ever tell Kenyans to rise up against each other. We should use the institutions of the judiciary to resolve our disputes. Come to you, Honorable Mudavadi. Um, thank you. Our name, our coalition name speaks for itself, the Amani Coalition. We have been preaching peace it may look like a simple thing in the church, but we have been making sure that at every forum, as we discuss issues, the issue of having to work together and conduct ourselves peacefully has been an underlying theme in all our movement. Secondly, we have all signed the code of conduct with the IABC. I think we should live up to it so that whatever we are doing, whatever we are asking our supporters to do, whatever our, campaign, uh, our party members are doing, they must live up to the letter of that code of conduct that they signed because it's a requirement in law, it's a legal requirement, we must live up to it. Finally, we must be prepared to accept the results. We all want to win, but there shall be only one winner at the end of the day. So we must be prepared to say that we concede where somebody else has taken the day. And that is the principle that we should carry along in order to be able to foster peace and to be able to make sure that there is tranquility even after the election. Thank you. Peter, can I? Thank you, Julie. When I launched my campaign on the 4th of November, I said my campaign will be based on issues. 
And I've never campaigned without preaching the peace message. Because there will be Kenya after 4th of March. And we must never allow ourselves to go to the events of 2008. Kenya is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. We must never try to destroy it. We nearly brought it down to its knees because of the way we behaved in the year 2008. We must never again allow it to go that route. Let me also stress this. Kenya is greater than all of us, and I've said this before. Peter, our, own individual, you... our own individual interests must never compel the country mm -hmm. to kneel down in anger, in violence. So what will come you the actively of March, do? Mm -hmm. Come the 4th of March, and Kenyans' will is determined through the electoral process. I have no problem conceding if I lose in the unlikely event. But if I win, then I would also wish that all of us observe that Kenya is for all of us and we fit in, we need to coexist, we need to appreciate each other, we need to respect each other. That is the little we can actually ever do for our country. Thank you. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Our coalition is based on peace, on unity and reconciliation of all communities in this country. If anybody has followed the speeches that I've made in every single rally, I start first and foremost on that note of peace, national reconciliation and unity in order for us to be able to achieve our objectives together as Kenyans. Secondly, the issue of violence often emanates from politicians themselves. I strongly believe that if politicians were to follow due processes, use existing institutions, people would not go to the streets. I have proved this myself in the past, in 2002, where I accepted and conceded defeat to the Honorable Mwai Kibaki. I will not shirk from doing the same again. Kenya is far greater than any single individual, and I do believe that a transparent, democratic process will give Kenyans the leader that they want, and it is for all of us to accept the will of the people and to join hands and support that candidate who ideally hope will be me on the 4th of March. <coughs> Professor Oleg Yapi. We are in this because we love our country. We are in this because we believe every Kenyan matters and we want Kenyans to win, the Kenyan people to win, irrespective of how each one of us here performs. We are just really so insignificant compared to the millions of citizens, including children who cannot vote. But we also want to commit that we cannot polarize the country in our own messaging, even in our own campaigns, and we have been very responsible as a party, and we will continue to, to the very way and, and beyond. But I would like to request the media that when you bring your political analyst, please desist and avoid analyzing how Kenyans are going to vote on the basis of their tribes. Respect the integrity of the citizens that ind individuals can vote for somebody irrespective of which region they come from. But when you start blocking the nation, that is what creates polarization. And let me come to you, Dida, please. Yeah, the code of conduct was a conditional document that we all signed. If we did not sign, we could not proceed with the requirements that were. I request it is a document that has a lot of good things that will promote peace. For those who signed and did not read, let's read it again. And for Kenyans, it is also a document that not the leaders need to go through. It is for everybody. It promotes peace. Number two, we have the national anthem. We need to look at the contents of the national anthem. And uh, in relation to the national anthem, which is a prayer that is recited, we have any piece of art originates from the author. This world, we are just, we are just acting, but it has the, uh, the, 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 the God who manages everything. If we get wrong leaders, it's because we are not sincere. And uh, for Malibu, us, for Mal us, Malibu, those, are words, those are words of wisdom. You do have more time, but I want to ask, what will you actively do to ensure that we do have a peaceful nation? I will propagate the code of conduct and its content. And uh, it, it has self, self discipline has to be inculcated. You have to be disciplined. And uh, what this aspect, I don't know why people run away from God. God 
has designed and he knows who will be the president of this country. God knows the present, the future. If you get it, then it is God who has realized that you are qualified. And if he did not get it, God has seen that you are not qualified, accept the defeat. And I also concur with President Barack Obama that we should not solve our difference in the streets. We need to solve it amicably, following Ac the right process. Accepting defeat and going through the legal process is yeah. not to the streets. Thank you.